Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 154. Day, day 3154. 3 is to signify the fact that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 154. We are in the process of solving the math problem from the practice number 2 that you will find at the very end of the book on page number 484. Please turn to page 484. Number 12 is what we are about to do. Read the problem yourself. It says that we have a data set and we are told that this data set has a standard deviation of 5. The question simply is what's going to happen to the, to the standard deviation. The standard deviation as it exists is 5. What's going to happen to the standard deviation if we were to add 3 to every single observation? 3 was added to each observation. What's the new standard deviation? How does it affect the standard deviation if you were to add a constant amount to all the observations? Well, we know we know that standard deviation the standard deviation. What does standard deviation measure? We know that standard deviation measures measures the spread. Measures the spread around the mean. Around the mean. It just tells you how, how widespread it is. For example, here is a couple of examples. Here is one, one distribution and the mean is this. Now we look at another distribution with the same mean, with the same mean, but much lower spread. The spread is going to be much lower. Here is another one. As you can see, the standard deviation of this one is going to be low. Let's call it 2 and the black one, let's call it 1. Standard deviation of the first, first distribution is much larger than the standard deviation of the second distribution. But the question simply is, what's going to happen if you were to add a constant amount to every single observation? The answer is nothing is going to happen to it. The standard deviation measures the spread around the mean and as long as, as long as as long as we add or subtract for that matter, if, if we add or subtract the same constant amount, the same constant amount to each observation, that's the key part, to each observation, it, it should be capitalized, it's not a new sentence, to each observation, it doesn't affect the standard deviation. It doesn't affect the standard deviation. So what does it do? Well it doesn't affect the standard deviation. All it does is that you're gonna pick up you're gonna pick up your you're gonna pick up your distribution and simply move it to the left or to the right. If you are adding if you are adding three to his observation, we're just gonna move it three units. For example if you let's let's look at this one here. We're just gonna move it three units Voila. It's the same distribution. It's the same distribution as number two. Is it this one is the same distribution as number two, but it's moved. You see now the mean is here. The mean is here. Before the mean was here, whatever the mean was here, let's call it let's call it mean whatever the mean was here. Let's call let's say the mean was M. We just shifted three units to the right. Because you are adding 3 to each observation, the new mean is going to be simply m plus 3. And that's all it is. But it doesn't affect, it doesn't affect the spread. It's the same spread, same spread as before, which is another way of saying the same standard deviation. You just pick up the whole distribution and just shift it to the left or to the right, depending on whether you're adding or subtracting the constant amount to each observation. But it has to be the same constant amount that, that, is, that is being added or subtracted to everything. Do you understand? Let's do number 13. Number 13. Number 13 says that 2y minus 3 over y is equal to 3 minus y over 2. And the question is, 
it says which of the following could be the value of y. We want to, they want us to solve for y and, and pick one of the answer choices. The answer choices that are given here, which of the following could be the values of y? 4, 1, negative 1, negative 3, negative 5. 4, 1, negative 1, negative 3, and negative 5. A, B, C, D, and E. Of these five choices, there are four, one, negative one, negative three, negative five. Which one of the following choices would work here? It says, which of the following could be the value of y? Let's solve for it. And that's the three. That's the three. My handwriting is atrocious. Let's test the three. So let's begin the process, shall we? Let's cross multiply. Let's take this quantity and multiply it by two. And then we'll take this quantity and multiply it by. We're going to cross multiply. So we end up with 2y minus 3 times 2. Let's put it in the front. Equals y cross multiply y times 3 minus y all right so far so good let's open the parentheses we get 4y minus 6 equals 3y minus y squared let's write it in the standard form of the quadratic equation let's bring the y square here so if you add if you add y square to both sides this is going to go away and we end up y squared here let's bring the 3y here Let's subtract 3y from both sides. We're going to end up with positive y. Positive 4y or negative 3y is positive y. Minus 6 equals 0. And let's pick up from here. So we have y squared plus y. y squared plus y minus 6 is equal to 0. In other words, we're looking for two numbers. We're looking for two numbers such that when we multiply their product, when we multiply them, their product is negative 6. And the same two numbers such that when we add them, when we add them, their sum is positive 1. Their sum is positive 1. Can we take of two such numbers? So that when we add them, we get a product of negative 3. And when we add, well, sorry, rather, when we multiply them, we get a product of negative 6. And when we add them, we get positive 1. So the two numbers are going to be positive 3 and a negative 2. A positive 3 and a negative 2, when we add them, we get positive 1, which is our coefficient of y. And we multiply them, that's the constant here. So positive 3 times negative 2 is going to give us negative 3. So let's, let's, in other words, we're going to write down our y as positive 3y and negative 2y. Positive 3y and a negative 2y. Positive 3y and negative 2y will give us the y that we have here. Minus 6 equals to 0. Let's look at these two terms. And these two terms have a common common term, common element. These two terms have y common. Let's take it out, common factor. Now we look at the other two terms. Let's erase this part so that we don't... Now we're looking at negative 2y, a negative 2y, and a negative 6. Is there anything common in there? Yes, the common factor is negative 2. Let's take it out, negative 2. When we take out negative 2, we end up with y here. And what number times negative 2 is going to give us negative 6? The answer is positive 3. And now we look at this right here and, and this quantity right here, and we find that they have y plus 3 as a common. Let's take out y plus 3 as a common. When we take out y plus 3, we're left with y here and a negative 2 here. And that has to be equal to 0. And now, since the product of these two quantities is equal to 0, which means that, since the product of these two quantities is 0, which means that either y plus 3 has to equal to 0, because obviously, if the product of two quantities is 0, then either this quantity is 0, or that quantity is 0, or perhaps they are both 0. Because 0 times, it doesn't matter what this quantity is, if this is 0, then it will be 0, and so forth. Either this is 0, or y minus 2 is equal to 0. If y plus 3 is equal to 0, that in turn implies that y has to be negative 3. Or y has to be positive 2. We have two solutions. Of course, we have two solutions because it was a quadratic equation. It was a second degree equation. If the exponent was two, obviously we're going to have two solutions. So which solution? So which of these two answer choices do we pick? The well, answer, of course, obviously is negative three because positive two does not appear as one of the answer choices. The answer is D. The answer is D. It's not. It's not such a bad problem. Seventy-six percent of people had no trouble with it. Seventy-six people of the people. Well, people had no trouble with it. Let's do the next one, number 14. Number 14. 
I did not give you the percentile for the number 12, did I? Number 12, 54% of people got it right. Number 13, just we just did, is 76%. And I'll give you number 14 in a, in a little bit. Let's see what number 14 actually says. Number 14 gives us a list. A list K, it says, list K consists of negative 10, negative 5, 0, 5, and 10. Question is, which of the following lists? Which of the following lists? It's plural, you understand? Have the same same range. Which of the following lists have the same range? So here, more than one answer choices would work, and we are we are to mark every single answer choice that works. And sometimes there are as many as seven or eight or nine answer choices. And if four of the uh, four out of nine answer choices work, then we have to mark all four of them. Because if you miss one, you won't get any credit. So let's get going, shall we? The first one is negative fifteen. Negative 1, 0, 1, and 15. Before we worry about before we worry about what's the range of this list and whether or not that range is the same as the range of this list, we have to first figure out the range of this list. What's the range here? We go all the way from negative 10 to negative positive 10. In this list, we go all the way from negative 10 to positive 10, which means the list K that is given to us has a range of has a range of 20. If you go negative 10 to positive 10 on the number line, is a range of 20. Here, here we are going, so that list goes from negative 10 to positive 10, the list that is given to us, which has a range of 20. But this one goes from negative 15 to positive 15. Negative 15 to positive 15, it has a range of 30. It has a range of 30. Obviously, it's not, it's not the right answer. It doesn't have the same range. Let's look at the next one. B goes from negative 7 negative 7, negative 4, negative 2, 1 and 13. And you understand that I did not actually have to write down every single entry because all we are interested in is the last entry and the first entry. And the range here of course if you go from 13 all the way to negative 7 on the number line, this is your 0, all the way to 13 from negative 7, from negative 7 to 0 is 7 units and then up to 13, as you can see, the range is exactly 20, which is the same range as this one, which means list B has the same range, B works. C goes from 0, 1, 2, 5, 8 and 10. Well it goes from 0 to 10, it has a range, it has a range of only 10. That's no good. Because we're looking for lists that have a range of 20. So C does not work. C does not work. Let's look at D. Let's look at D. D says 2, 3, 5, 15, 19, and 22. There we go. 22, starting from 2, ending at 22, the range here, the range here is 22 minus 2, which is 20, and that works. Because the list that was given to us, list K, has a range of 20. So D works. So D works, B works, A did not work. A and C did not work. So far, our answer choices are B and D. Let's look at the last one. E in the list that is given to us in twice E goes from 4, 5, 6, and 24. Right. Because I looked in the book in there for a second because I thought I wrote it, I wrote it something wrong. Notice it only has four observations. It really doesn't matter whether it has four observations or whether it has six observations. 
or whether it has 6,000 observations. It makes no difference to us. Our job was simply to identify a list where the range is 20. Uh, where the range is 20. That's all it is. It doesn't matter how many observations it has, whether it has two observations or 20 million observations. This one has four. So here, range is 24 minus 4. 24 minus 4. It goes all the way from 4 to 24. The range is equal to 20. So that one also works. So the answer choices are, answer choices, answers are B, C did not work, B, and E. Those are the three correct answer choices. And almost two thirds of the people who took the exam had no trouble with it. Two thirds of the people got it right, 65%. Tomorrow, we'll do the two questions that you see on the next page, number 15 and 16. Okay? Bye now.